Hello everyone, this is John Galt back with another video, uh, part two in the using Project MoCap's weapon system. Right? This is a uh, courtesy video that I'm making for the guys uh, at MoCap Online uh, to direct people that purchase this template that they're going to be selling um, to give them some guidance and instruction on how you use utilize this thing okay and this thing's got a pretty snazzy weapon system in it that i designed and created for uh, uh the creation of new weapons which we covered in the first video right using the weapon system part one and uh where we left off in that video there was quite a bit of stuff left to do and i didn't want to you know try to smash it all into that one video so i decided to break it out and do two parts on this okay so, uh, we covered how you create, bring in a weapons mesh, uh, manipulate it a little bit to make it conform with the way that this template is made, and also how then you can create a child blueprint from the master weapon blueprint, manipulate the class defaults and the static mesh and the sound effects and the animations and all that stuff, and actually put it on the character. Uh, for use in the game in the template. Okay Now the one thing that we left off and we didn't talk about was how after you do that How do you get it into this weapon station, right? So you guys are probably full aware that Come on, let me get away from these idiots here um, You guys are aware that you know, we talked about this in the map making uh version of this video the little tutorial i made to show you guys basic map 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 making and the guidelines and parameters to follow uh to make it you know work in the steam integration and all that stuff and we talked about these weapon stations and how you know you have to have your your rifle either in the relaxed mode or the aiming mode right the only weapon you can get out of this station is rifles i did not add uh, pistols uh, to this. You can create different pistols, but I didn't add the switching of pistols in this station. If that's something that you guys want, you will have to manipulate this template. Uh, once again, guys, this ain't ain't never was meant to be a, hey, I bought a template, now I'm going to change eight assets and put it on Steam for sale. Right? This is a template that is to be used for guidance, how this was made, you get access to all the blueprints and all that stuff, so, yeah, don't send me hate mail saying, how do I do everything? You guys ain't getting that from me. That's hourly money right there, guys, and time is money. So I'm giving you guys the basics of this, and uh, you guys will have to roll with it from there. That's just the way it's going to be. Okay, so anyway, if you have your rifle in either of these two positions, and you go into this terminal... Currently, I have this set up to use just buttons one through five, right? So button one gives you an assault rifle, which is what you start out with by default anyway. And also, after you die, you come back with an assault rifle. And you want a different one, you come to this little station. Okay, number two gives you a uh, burst rifle. Number three gives you a shotgun. Number four gives you a beam gun. And number five will give you a rocket launcher. So... Building upon that last video that we made uh, for part one of this, you guys bring in your weapon mesh and you do all that and you got yourself a new weapon now, and now you want to add it to this station, okay? So that you can come in here and instead of it being number, you know, two being the burst rifle that I made to give in this template by default, you want that to be your new gun, right? So that you can come into this station, press number two, and it'll give you your new gun, Okay. So, there's two things that have to be manipulated in, in order for this to happen, okay? Uh, one is, uh, in this blueprints folder here, that's where the actual station is, right? And it is a, you know, independent object. It's not tied to the level, right? And you can bring in, drag in, and copy, and put these things wherever the hell you want to, okay? In your map. So, if you open this blueprint up, uh, inside here, you got this is where you guys are going to notice uh, a little bit of logic in here. And I do mean a little bit of logic. There's not a whole lot goes on with this thing. Okay? So, 
this thing contains a variable, one variable called weapons array, okay? That is the inventory, if you will, of this station, meaning all the weapons that are accessible in this station have to reside in this weapons array. And if I click this weapons array, you're going to notice that if you look over here at the default value, it's going to tell you that there's five array elements. And if you hit this drop down box here, that right there, my friends, is where you plug in your weapons that you want the, the corresponding buttons down here to give you. So if you make a new weapon and you want it to be available in here, um, you, could, you, could, you could replace one that's already in here. So in that example I gave a moment ago, uh, let's say we want our uh, child blueprint we just created, our new gun, to be in the number one. When you press number one, it gives you that gun instead of, or number two, it gives you that gun instead of this default burst rifle that I put in here. You simply... Hit this drop-down box and select your new weapon from this list, right? And you plug it in here. It's simple as that. Literally, simple as that, okay? Um, and that's really that. I mean, you just plug it in here. Now, if you guys want to expand upon what's already in here, right? You can see here that right here's all my little button presses. There's number one. Number two, all the way down to number five, right? And all it does is, is it calls a custom event that is created on the character blueprint, which we'll go investigate here in a moment. All it does is call that event, right? That's it. So if you want to expand this out and say you want to be able to select 10 different weapons instead of five, you would simply add it to the array, right? Right here, you would hit this plus sign and add a new array element, and it'll be number five here. And you would plug your new weapon in here, right? Just the same as, you know, changing these out. You'll now have a listing for number five. You plug in your child blueprint here, and forevermore, when you press that button, it would be number six. It will give you your new weapon that you add to this array. And all you do here is you simply right-click and put, press a number six, you would put in your number six key, and then, you know, out of this, you would call this function. Uh, well, actually, that, that, that's actually not correct, okay? Uh, we're going to have to take a step back here, because as you can see here, when we go down through here, you see that number one calls server swap to weapon zero. This one is server swap to weapon one, weapon two. Weapon three, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're wanting to add a number six weapon, you need a new custom event on your character blueprint called server swap to weapon five, right? So let's go investigate that for a moment, and then we'll carry on. So in, if you go to your characters folder here, and you go underneath the blueprints, you're going to open your character master, right? So if you open this up, you know, there. There's a lot of stuff in here, guys. I mean, a lot of stuff. But really, the section that you're looking for here is called Select Weapon at Station, Replicated. And this right here, my friends, in this comment box, this is where all this stuff takes place. Yes, there's redundancy. Yes, there's ways to streamline this. All that, guys. This is not meant to be a completed demo game. I'm going to buy it and asset flip it and make a million dollars. Some of these things are intentionally made this way so that if people who buy this template, if that is what they choose to do, which they're free to, right, uh, they're going to have to do a little bit of work, right? Otherwise, I'd have just made the game myself and released it myself, right? This is only to demonstrate mocap's animations used in a real-world example on top of replicating on top of game mechanics, right? Okay. So, as you can see right here, right here is that custom event. Server swap to weapon four. Server swap to weapon three, right? So, if we're going to add a fifth weapon, here's how you do that, guys. You take this right here. You copy one of these little chunks out, this whole branch here, just like that. See it? And you hit Control-C to copy it, and then you hit Control-V to paste it, right? 
And what is what is this all of a sudden? Select socket transform. What have I done? What have I done? Yeah, that's just from the one above it. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I copied one thing too many. And you're going to see here that it's going to give you bloody murder that this custom event has got a problem, right? Well, the problem was is that we copied it and it was named identical to this one. <laughs> so really, we're going to call our new one down here server underscore swap to weapon five, right? So all you have to do is select your custom event and we would call it server underscore swap to weapon five, right? And now uh, we have it, right? Now the other thing that I want you guys to pay attention to here is if you select this event, you're going to notice that it's set to run on the server, which also means this one right here needs to be set to run on server, okay? And then you can go ahead at this point and compile it and save it. And I think that's the only thing that I changed. Let me see here. If that's equal to weapon zero, yes, that should be the same. Get weapon in the index array uh, zero, that's correct. That right there won't change. Get all actor classes, get zero. Yep, that won't change. The socket won't change. Get, uh, this right here will change, guys. This is going to be changing too. Can anybody guess what this right here needs to be modified to in our new one down here? Anybody guess? Anybody? That needs to be changed to a 5, right? And once again, there's ways to promote this stuff to variables. There's ways to get it from the uh, inventory station itself so that you don't have to pay, manually punch all this stuff in here. You guys can go do that, okay? Simple as that. All right, so that was the two things, really, that needed to be changed, right? We needed to rename this custom event, make sure it was set to run on server, right? And we needed to change uh, this one variable right here. And, guys, that's why having this stuff all out in the open like this, not crammed up in a function somewhere that nobody can find or understand, that's another reason why all this stuff, I, I left it all hanging out here in the wind like this. So you guys can find it. Now, granted, there are functions and stuff still, but the majority of this whole template, I intentionally left this stuff out in the open so that it's not hidden. And you guys can follow the chain and understand this better if you're using this as a learning uh, template. Okay? So what you'll notice is, what I want to point out here, and then we'll get back over to our weapon station, is that this one is get zero. This one is get one. You guys see a pattern here? Get two, get three, get four, and now our new one is, can anybody guess? Get five. All right, so if you added another weapon, it would be the same process, and this would be six. The next one would be seven. The next one would be eight, right? And this, this right here would change, right? Of course, this would change. But everything else, just those two things is all you have to change. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and compile that and save it. Okay? And now we're going to go back to our weapon station blueprint. Remember, we left there and came in here. So now if I come in here, right, you remember I told you guys in here, we'll, we'll recap this. I want to be as clear, perfectly clear about this as I possibly can. Okay? Okay? Because I'm not going to be able to sit and answer questions, you know, 80,000 questions a day about the use of this template. You guys are going to have to watch these videos, okay? Because I'm a busy man. I ain't got time to sit here and be you guys' technical support. And once again, this is not my template. I was only contracted to make this, which means you're going to have to contact MoCap online when you run into any kind of issues or anything, okay? Okay. So use these videos, guys. I made these for you as a courtesy, okay? Took time and stuff out of my day to do this for you guys. So pay attention. So what did we do in here? You guys remember? Anybody, right? So we took this weapons array, and I told you guys you would simply add an element. So we're going to go ahead and do this. So I clicked that plus sign and added an element. Now, I don't technically have another weapon to plug in this, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to uh, the launcher. Okay? Actually, no. Let's set this to something. Let's set it to the burst rifle. Okay? We're going to pretend like that, that burst rifle is our new gun that we created from the previous video's information. Okay? So that's it. You add a array element for each weapon that you want this weapon station to have. So we added another one. We plugged in our weapon, which is a child blueprint from a master that we manipulated class defaults in. And now, now, we can come up here and we can drag out of this and say, swap. Swap. There's our new one, right? Remember the numbers? Swap to weapon zero, weapon one, weapon two, weapon three, weapon four. Uh, you know what? Maybe that's actually not right. It's supposed to be swapped to weapon five. So let me compile and see you guys. Sometimes you, you, you have to do this. Compile and save that. And then we also need to compile and save this blueprint. Now, now we should have it, right? Because it ain't updated. So I'm going to say swap. Uh, yeah, it didn't do it. It didn't do it. <laughs> Why? Why? Let's drag it out of the very top up here and say swap. Hey, hey, there it is. Custom event. Oh, I, okay, look. I see why that was a thing. I've got this freaking event uh, over here in our character master. Look at that. It's got custom event on the front of it. That's because Unreal saved, auto-saved in the middle of something. Right? Really, that just needs to be called server swap to weapon 5. So it was in there this whole time, and I just didn't see it because it was named differently. Congratulations, I win a gold star. All right, so now, now we can drag out of this and say uh, swap. And once again, it's not going to give it to us. All right, so we're going to have to go all the way up here. And let's try that one more time. Swap. There it is. Look at that. Server swap to weapon five. There's our custom event right there. Now, why it's letting these work that way, I'm not real sure, right? I don't know. It's just something quirky about the engine, apparently. And we simply plug in our new number six key press into this. Right? Now we got it set up and we just added that new weapon to our station. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and compile this and save it. And now, guys, look at this. Let me go ahead and get away from these dummies. All right. So now if we press number one, we get this assault rifle. Press number two, there's our burst rifle. Press number three, there's our shotgun. Press number four, there's our beam gun. Press number five, there's our launcher. Now what did we put our new gun? Number six button, and it's another burst rifle, but it could easily be the new gun you created in the previous video. Look at that. There it is. See it? There it is. Now, it didn't play a sound effect. Right? Why? Why? Why didn't it play a sound effect? Well, more than likely, it's because uh, I did not uh, promote those things to variables. Right? So, let's see here. Where am I playing at? Am I playing it in here? I would imagine that I am. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is, guys. See, I built this stuff, and it's still a little confusing to me because it's hot off the press, for one. I literally just turned in the version that they're going to be selling a couple hours ago, right? So the reason it's not playing a sound effect is because I forgot. At the end of all these chains of events here, we're calling a multicast event, which is right here, that simply just plays a sound effect for uh, equipping a weapon, right? So the reason it ain't playing is because we need to drag this up here and plug it in so that it causes this uh, multicast event at the end of this equation here. Okay? And you know, some of this stuff could actually be moved into that weapons terminal. Uh, just so you guys know. Okay, so now, now, it ought to work perfectly. Yeah, Let me get away from these dummies. That'll be in another video. All right, so now, one's the assault rifle, plays the sound, two, three, four, five, and then six is our new shiny burst rifle. All right, there it is. Okay? 
So there you have it, guys. That's how you can add more weapons to this station. Now I'm going to give you my personal opinion about this. How many weapons do you really need in this station? I don't know. That's up to you guys. But here's what I would likely do, okay, if it was me. Um, you know, you can make these weapon stations have different weapons in them, right? Um, and how you would do that is you would make that array variable accessible, right? Now, I don't think I did, right? I don't think I did, right? So here you go, guys. Here's some more of I intentionally didn't complete this. This is some of the things that you guys should do, right? Because I didn't want to pigeonhole somebody into a set of mechanics and then them have to go in there and undo a bunch of stuff that I did to make it work the way they want it to. I would rather make it as generic as I possibly can and then anybody who wants to change it, add that change instead of removing things, right? So here you go, guys. Let me give you a pro tip right here on, on how I would go about this. Instead of having, you know, nine different buttons across the top, just go ahead and roll with five, right? Each weapon station has the ability to hold five different weapons, okay? Well, the call, call, how do you do that? Well, check this out. If we open up that blueprint, this master blueprint right here, if we take this weapons array and we hit this little eye icon right here, we expose that as a variable, which means now you can edit that variable from within the level, right? So what does that mean exactly? Well, what that means is, is that if you have a weapon terminal right here and we expose that variable, you see right here under defaults, now we have that variable exposed, which means we can plug in different weapons in different places, right? So watch this. Here's exactly what I mean. I can take this terminal right here and I can say, okay, uh, weapon zero is going to be the beam gun. Weapon one is going to be the launcher. Weapon two uh, or three is going to be, um, oh, I don't know, the burst rifle. Weapon four is going to be, oh, I don't know, uh, hell, we'll go ahead and give him another pistol. And we're going to pretend like this number six one doesn't exist, okay? And we're going to say, save all. Now watch what happens when I go into this terminal, right? So if I, oh shit, I don't remember which one that was. Damn it! Which one was it? Oh my god, I don't remember. It's this one. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag a copy of this out so that I'll be able to demonstrate this. So I'm going to put two of these terminals right side by side, okay? So what, man, what are you even going on? I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about <clears throat> those in another video, guys. The dummies now have the ability to talk and talk smack, okay? So now if I come in here, you remember the other terminal on the other side, the number one button was the assault rifle. Right? Well, now if I mash number one in this one, it's still the assault rifle. What's number two? Burst, shotgun, beam. Well, maybe I didn't save it. Uh, let's see here. Save current. Maybe I, maybe I didn't save it. Maybe this won't exactly work just exactly the way I just said that it would. No, you don't even know what you're doing. Well, hey. You know, there's a lot to this stuff, guys. Be thankful somebody's willing to share this information in the first place. So now, let's see here. Does it actually work now? No, it's still giving us the exact same guns. Yeah, so maybe you can't do that that way. All right, let me just check one thing here. So why... Now that we made that, could it be because it's not replicated? I don't remember if I replicated it or not. Yeah, it is set replicated. Hmm. Well, maybe it won't work that way, guys. Or maybe it needs to be uh, exposed on spawn. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's the magic. Let's try this one more time. But theoretically, that should work. Right? You should be able to define different weapons in different stations, but that may not necessarily be so. 
No, it ain't gonna work. Alright, well, anyway, whatever. Moving right along. Okay, nothing to see here, guys. Moving right along. Um, that is still kind of intriguing to me why it won't work. What's in the logic that would be cause of that? Let's investigate for just a second here. So we're not spawning that anywhere. All right, and then in the character blueprint, what are we doing in here? Exactly. Uh, we are checking to see if that's equal to zero. We're getting our weapon inventory. We're destroying our current uh, weapon ref. We're getting all actors of class, which is the weapon station. Uh, we're getting the uh, array in index zero. We're getting the weapons array from it. We're getting the item in zero. And then we're spawning an actor from class. And then we're setting an array element. So we're setting our inventory weapon back to whatever this was. And we're setting our current weapon ref. I don't know. I don't know why it ain't working. Theoretically, that right there should be golden. But apparently, for some reason, no. You know, maybe... Uh... Alright, we're going to try one more little experiment here. And then we will uh, move on. From that and I can destroy this map because this is just a demonstration anyway so if I bring this thing into the world right it's got those weapons set that way and if I change these around let's just change number one to the beam gun and we uh, save all oh wait a minute I did set that in the level didn't I yes all right so save selected and then if we spawn in here, let's go find that. Sorry about this, guys, but hey, you know, this is supposed to teach you guys something, not just be a... I clicked what he clicked. All right, so I hit number one and it ain't doing it, still. Um, well, you might not be able to do it that way, but maybe you could just do it as a master child thing. Right, you could create this one as weapon station one or assault rifle station. Right, and the only thing it has in it's different types of uh, auto fire weapons, and then you create a child blueprint, load it up with different stuff, and call it uh, explosives station, and you put explosive weapons only in that one. That might that might work too, but I don't I don't really know and understand why this ain't working for me. I mean, I would suspect it would, but apparently, no. Right? So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there you go. Uh, so I guess with that being the case, a simplistic way to, ch to go about this differently would be uh, instead of doing what I just did, trying to uh, expose that variable and make it where you can put different ones in different stations or whatever... Instead of doing that, maybe uh, do it the master child way, right? So you could uh, blank all this stuff out to default. Let's just give that a test here. Since that epically failed, let's go about this a different way. We're going to call this one um, Station Master, like that. We're going to do it this way instead. Okay? And... Um, you know, I suppose I would have to delete these, right? So let's take uh, all the weapon stations in this whole map and let's delete every single one of them in one fell swoop. Just like edit and delete. Boom, they're all gone. Okay, so now this is officially our master uh, weapon. Uh, yeah, our master weapon thingamajig. Okay, so what that means now is is that we should blank all these out, right? We need to leave them in here, but we're gonna we're going to set all these to none, right? Like this, none, 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 and none. Now let's go ahead and compile and save that. So now there's no weapons in it at all, 
And I'm pretty sure we shouldn't have to do this whole expose on spawn thing. It just simply needs to be editable. Okay, now this may still not work yet, but let's give this just a good old college try. Okay, so now we, we bring this in and this is the master, right? So there's nothing in it. Okay, so if I come over here, it'll, it might even generate some errors at this point because I don't think I did an is valid check. So if I press number one, look, it gives us absolutely nothing, right? Two, three. There's nothing in it. Remember, we removed it. Okay, and yes, we are going to get some errors. And this is because, once again, I didn't put an is valid check in it. Okay, so uh, really what needs to happen here, for those of you who bought this template, you might want to, you know, fix this. Um... What you need to do is that you need to check to see if, let's see, where would this go, actually? Before we ever even spawn anything, uh, and before we ever even destroy anything, what we should really want to do is check to see if that weapons array is even uh, valid, right? So you could uh, probably pull out of right here and do an is valid check this one with the question mark and no 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 what what's given the error is that when it's trying to destroy this right here is what's given the error so what you would want to do is right here is where you would want to do an is valid right you'd put this check right here to say that if there's nothing in your weapon inventory right here, don't destroy it because there's nothing to destroy, right, at this point. So if we put that in line right here like this, and now we go check that. Now, remember, this would have to go in every one of these, right? Uh, since we're duplicating it over, you guys might want to move that into a function and automate it a little bit, and you're very free to do that. But anyway, let's just go try it with the number one. Right, so let's see if we can get all these errors out of here. Okay, so now this has got nothing in it. So now if I press 1, right, and then press 1 again, right, see it ain't doing anything at this point. Why? Well, because there's nothing in our inventory, our character inventory, there's nothing in slot 1. Slot 0, I mean. So it won't do anything. And then if we press 2... Yes, it'll go ahead and do it, but if we try it again, well, yeah, I guess it will. All right, so anyway, whatever. Those errors, well, it will do it because we didn't put it in number two, right? Remember? Uh, to correctly fix all that, guys, you would have to do that for every one of these, right? Remember, we only done it for this one, <clears throat> and yes, it corrected it. So you would have to put that in here for this one, here for this one, you would want to do that for every single one of these. All right, but anyway, I'm getting sidetracked and off topic here. What we're trying to do is figure out a way that we can put different weapons in different stations. All right, so this has got nothing in it, nothing. So if I select this now and come over here to the defaults section and go to the weapons array, what happens now if I put uh, the beam gun as number two and save it? Oh. Yeah, that's totally what I meant to do. All right, so we play, and let's go find that station, and let's see now what happens. So if I press number one, hey, look at that. It gave me the beam gun, right? All right, now let's, let's keep testing this theory. So now that this is set up in a master child way, what happens now if I drag a copy of this out, and instead of it being the beam weapon, I actually want this to be the launcher? Right? And then we spawn in here, and let's try that same thing again. It's on the other side of the cow, y'all. Alright, so now, if I come in this one, and I press number one, what does it give me? It gives me the beam gun still. Okay, and then this one is... Wait, did I set that right? What did I do? Yeah, I put it to... Uh, the launcher. Okay, so what's happening here now at this point, I've got it narrowed down and why this ain't working. The reason that this ain't working is because it's not getting the unique station, right? All I'm doing is get all actors of class, 
Well, each of these is the same exact object, right? So it's getting the same exact object, literally. So what I'm trying to do here will not work without further scripting modifications. Right, so what would really have to happen is we would have to put some sort of a tag system on these things so that we could get individual ones, right? So really, it's not worth that. You know, honestly, it's not. Uh, what I would rather do at this point and advise you guys would be this. Um, just replace the ones that are in here that you don't like, right? Uh, you could even, okay, so if this was in a game scenario, you could do something like this. You could load one map up, and it has only machine guns, right? That's it. All you get to use on that map is automatic weaponry. Then if you decide to make another map, you could put half automatic weapons and half pit or half uh, explosives, right? And mix and match so that you can just make access available what weapons you want to be used in that map. Or alternately, once again, you guys could come in here and just simply replace what I have with your new weapon that you make and alternate them out. Other than that, you'll have to do some more scripting. And I'll just go ahead and tell you where it would be, right? It would be in here because we're doing a get all actors of class right here, but we're not defining any different classes. They're all just the BP weapon station master. They're all coming from the same thing. And it's getting the one in index zero, right? So it's putting them all in there. You would have to get unique stations is what this amounts to here. And at that point, that's, you know, once again, lots more logical have to be uh, put in so that you can get specific stations, right? Um, like you would uh, promote this to an array and then out of that array, you could decide which station in the array that it picks, right? So you could do it still, but yeah, it wasn't designed that way. You know, it's meant to only house five weapons in the, in the get-go, okay? So anyway, I know that seems like a big waste of time, and yeah, you're right. It actually is a big waste of time, uh, but whatever, right? You know, these things are supposed to be for you guys to learn from. Uh, not only just, hey, this is exactly how you use it. Because what if you don't want it to work the way that I made it? Right? I mean, think about that for a minute. What good is it me, you know, showing you exactly how it's done without, you know, talking a little bit about how you could modify it and make it mold into something that you might rather have? That's valuable, guys. No, it ain't broke. No, it's not crap. No, it's, it works perfectly fine for the way that I designed it, right? I never designed it to hold any more than five weapons in the first place. And my intention was that, you know, you just simply come into the default station. And if you don't like my, ver my version of an assault rifle, you create a child blueprint, make your own, or modify the damn assault rifle that's in the project, right? That's what that other video was for, to show you guys exactly how you would do that, Okay. So, once again, I wasn't trying to build everybody a game that they can go sell on Steam. There's supposed to be some things lacking in this or some things that you would like to see. Well, if you would like to see them, go make them. <laughs> right? If you buy the template, you don't like the way that I've got it set up and how it works, come in here and change it. I made it in such a way that hopefully you guys can come in here and do that. Right? I didn't try to pigeonhole anybody into anything. Sure, I set it up this way, but I didn't make it where it can't never be changed, right? You come in here and change it however you want to. Okay, now, with that out of the way, I want to go ahead and move into the projectiles, right? In the other video, guys, I told you guys that this weapons blueprint has the ability to, cre to create hit scan child blueprints or projectile based. Either or, by simply checking the button. And uh, following the caveats that I've set out in the previous video. But what I didn't get to do was talk to you guys about a projectile blueprint. Because this does come with a master projectile blueprint that needs to be talked about. Okay? So, here's what we're going to do. In the weapons folder, you're going to notice that there's a folder in here called projectiles. Right? Right? And if you open that folder up inside the blueprints right here, it is, guys. That is your master projectile blueprint. 
This is the one that you create all your projectiles from. This one blueprint. And I'm going to show you guys. We're going to run through a little bit about what this thing actually does and what it's capable of and why it even matters. Okay? So here's what we're going to do before we start. All right, so I'm going to go to one of those stations and I'm going to get a... a uh, or not, right? Because I freaking deleted them all. Son of a freaking mother... Father... But that's okay because we can fix it super fast. Yeah, I, d I totally didn't mean to do that. It's like 3 a.m., guys, so cut me some slack here. I've been bashing my brains out trying to get this template ready for you guys in the first place as quickly as possible. So, you know, I built all this stuff in about four weeks' time. You know, so cut me some slack here. Um... Yeah, what was I doing again? Who am I? Oh, yeah, that's right. So we were going to bring in a station and put a mother flipping weapon in it because I deleted everything. Uh, now, once again, this template won't be this foobard version that I'm dicking with here, okay? You guys will get a clean one, the way it was set up before I started messing with any of this stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here and freaking add a projectile weapon in here because I want to talk about this. So currently, by default, in this project, there's only two projectile weapons. The shotgun and the launcher are projectile weapons. Okay, everything else in here, pistol, burst rifle, assault rifle, they're all hit scan weapons, right? So now that I've did that, I want to go to that station and get that uh, launcher out, and I want to talk about it and how this uh, projectile blueprint works, okay? Okay, so if I press number one, okay, here we go. Now this is gonna be a little loud, guys, so hold your ears. So this is a projectile weapon. So what does that mean exactly, John Galt? Well, what that means is, is that his scan weapons will hit instantly wherever your crosshair's pointed. What that means is, is that you don't have to lead targets. If you do, it's a very minimal amount because it hits where the crosshair is. It's a point and click hit idiot proof gun. That's what a hit scan weapon is. So most people prefer their weapons to be projectile based. Why? Well, because it takes a little bit more finesse and finagling to get them accurate. What does that mean? That means that by the time I click this button and shoot at someone, by the time that projectile actually gets to where they are, they have likely moved, right? So this is where, based on your projectile speed uh, and all that stuff, you may have to lead targets a significant amount in order to make that projectile contact the target that you're actually shooting at, okay? And like, for instance, this weapon in particular, you know, you don't really shoot at them. You shoot where they think, where you think they're going to be by the time your projectile gets there. That's why this weapon in particular has AOE, right? It has uh, splash damage. So you're not really trying to shoot them directly. You're just trying to ping, ping around where you think they're going to be by the time your projectile gets there, okay? Now, now with all that out of the way, let's talk about projectiles, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so this projectile, like if I come into the uh, weapons folder, into the weapons blueprints, under the weapons here, you guys are going to see the launcher folder. Right here is that launcher's projectile. Okay? Now, just for the sake of showing you guys how this works, I'm going to create a brand new projectile for this rocket launcher. Now, I didn't call it a rocket launcher. It's just called a, what, ladies and gentlemen? It's just a, a launcher in general. So what does that mean? That means it could be a rocket launcher like it's kind of set up as now. Or it could be a grenade launcher, grenade flinger, lob tosser, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? So let me show you guys how you manipulate this stuff and why this template, ladies and gentlemen, is such a good deal from MoCap Online and why they paid me the big bucks to make this thing for them. Let me show you guys why. So this launcher weapon, you guys already saw how it functions in this in this template. That's the way it's going to come. That's the way that launcher is going to come for you guys. Now let's go in here for a moment and pretend like we want to start dicking with this thing. Now this is going to also tie into uh, the video, the first video that I made. Okay, 
remember in that video, guys, I told you that we're going to come in here and try to make some manipulation to make some really funky weapons, right? Here's how we're going to do that. It's going to be a combination of, of manipulating the class defaults in this launcher child blueprint and the projectile itself, okay? That's how we're going to do this here. And we're going to fiddle with this for, oh, I don't know, probably about 30, 45 an hour, right? Somewhere around in there. And I want you guys to really pay attention. If you, if you don't pay attention to any of the rest of this video, tune in right here. Pay attention from here forward because this is cool, okay? All right, so first things first is we're going to create ourselves a brand spanking new projectile. We're not going to use this one that's already pre-created and pre-fabbed in here for you guys. So how do we do that? Well, we go to the, the projectiles folder under the blueprints, and we take this master projectile, and we do it just like we did the weapon in the last video. Right-click, create child blueprint, and we're going to call this BPC for blueprint child underscore P-R-O-J underscore awesome, right? We're going to call this our awesome projectile. And now what gun am I going to use that on? Well, I'm going to use it on this generic launcher. So I'm going to take that projectile and I'm going to drag it into that launcher's weapons folder and say, move here. Don't ever, f well, let me, let me not say that. I was going to say, don't ever fiddle with the master. You guys can fiddle with whatever you want to. But really, truthfully, create yourself a child blueprint and then dick with that one. And then that way, if you foobar it, you can simply delete the child blueprint and come in here and right click and make yourself a new one. If you foobar this master one, don't call me for help because I'm not going to help you guys. Right? You're on your own. <laughs> you break it, you buy it. Well, actually, you got to buy it before you can break it. So I guess technically that's not true. But no, I'm not going to sit and handhold you guys and you know, uh, answer every little qualm of a question that you guys may have about this stuff. That's the reason these videos exist, okay? If you guys want tutorials from me, you go to my Patreon page and become a, a paying member, and then you guys can come ha harass me and uh, get, you know, specific information about stuff, okay? All right, so we did that. Now, in our launcher folder here, uh, we have a shiny new uh, awesome projectile. So how do we make our gun use that? Anybody know? Anybody at all in this audience? Anybody know how we make our launcher use this new projectile that we just created? Anybody? We open up our launcher child blueprint for our weapon, right? See how it's got wet and the projectile's got P-R-O-J? See that? We open up our launcher weapon. And we go right here where it says projectile. And we simply hit this drop down box and we say we're going to use our pre our BPC PROJ awesomeness. Right? We plug it right straight in there, compile it and save it. And now we are in fact going to be using our brand spanking new projectile. Okay? So let's go get that launcher again and let me show you guys what this does, which is likely nothing. Okay? So we pick number one. Now we got our launcher again. Let's see what happens when I shoot it. Uh, yeah. Nothing. It's baroque. Broke. Don't do a damn thing, Galt. This template sucks and you should go die in a ditch because it don't work. Why? Well, it's because we didn't fill out any class defaults for our shiny new awesome projectile. What do you think? Yeah. So we go back to our awesome projectile blueprint our child blueprint let's open this thing up and see what's going on in here well first of all we don't even have a uh, static mesh or any kind of a particle right to indicate that this even has a visualization right so what do we do here well i've built into this template for you guys you can use a static mesh as your projectile or you can use a particle system for your projectile you pick what do you want it to be? You could use a static mesh and a projectile or and a, a particle system. It's your choice, right? So let's say, for example, just for the sake of argument, we're going to say that we're going to use just a static mesh, right? So you select your static mesh and you come over here and you pick yourself one. 
right? So what do we got? A cone? Is there a freaking cone in here? Tell me there's a cone in here. Uh, look at that, a shaped cone. All right, so look at that. There it is. Now, if we zoom in here, you guys are going to notice that it's probably super, super mother flipping slow. All right, so our camera speed set to one. Let's zoom way in here. Well, look at that. That thing's super duper tiny. Well, let's pump up the volume some. So pay attention, guys. We're going to ma manipulate and make a cool ass projectile here. So first of all, it probably kind of makes sense that that's pointing forward, right? So it's stabbing them instead of coming at them like a hat. Right, so how do we do that? Well, you select your projectile static mesh. You come over here and uh, hit this little rotation thingamajig here, and look at this. We should. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so now what? Well, it's super duper tiny, right? So how could we do that? Well, we could likely hit this scale thing here, and we could grab it uh, from the center, possibly. Possibly, maybe. And we could probably scale that thing up. Look at that. Look at that. Let's make it. Let's make it like freaking that freaking big. Okay. Now here's the deal, guys. The only thing in this entire projectile that has any collision on it is the projectile collision. That's it. So you would generally speak and want that projectile collision to match the size of your mesh, roughly. It don't have to be perfect. It's a goddamn projectile. Who cares? So how do you change that? Well, you select your collision here, and you come over here, and you just scale the sum bitch up, right? Now you're going to notice that hey, that ain't quite square here, right? We would have to make it that big to actually catch the beginning of the projectile, but it's too damn big. Well, how do we fix that? Well, you take your static mesh here, and you pick your move thingamajig, and you move your damn static mesh there. Then you go back and select your collision. And you, all right, fine. Okay, so maybe something a little bit more like that right there will do the trick. Right? And then we compile it and save it. And now let's go try that out and see what happens. Right? So we're going to go back over here to, uh, where the hell is this thing? I should probably put it, all the stations back, but whatever. So we're going to pick our launcher. And now we're going to shoot it and check this out. Did you see anything? I don't know. Hey, look at that. There it is. There it is. It's right there. And I'll watch. It'll sit there, and then eventually it'll go away. Probably. Maybe. There it went. It's gone. Right? So it is shooting these things out of it. Oh, look. It's stuck to the wall there. Right? Now, why is that? Well, we've got a lot of work to do yet here, guys. There's a lot of functionality built into these things. So now, probably right about this point right here, you should probably be asking yourself, okay, now wait a minute. Exactly how... How the hell do I want this gun to actually work? Like, is it literally going to be a rocket launcher? Or, or I, would I rather have it, you know, shoot the things out and have them bounce around on the ground and then blow up? I mean, how the hell actually do I even want them to blow up in the first place? Or is it literally supposed to be just like a bullet? Right? These are all questions that you guys are going to have to answer for yourself. Okay. So, in the creation of this, we can come in here and now, okay, so we got ourselves a projectile going on here. We readjusted our collision and whatnot. What else is there in here that we can fiddle around with? Okay. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, bypass some of this and we're going to click right here for our class defaults. And we're going to come over here and look underneath the, the class defaults. Look at all these settings and shit we have in here. Not quite as many as the weapons have, but this is a very powerful projectile blueprint here. All right, so let's go back up to the top and start right here at the default section. Well, first and foremost, is this thing going to have critical damage, yes or no? Well, if it's going to be no, you'll probably want to put this to one. Meaning, whatever damage you decide to make this thing do is going to be times one. So if you tell it it's going to do 10 damage and you put a 1 in here, it will do 10 damage. If you leave that thing set to 0, don't send me hate mail, guys. If you leave that set to 0, what is 10 times 0? Anybody go to school and learn any math at all? Anybody? It's 0, which means your projectile ain't going to do no damn damage regardless of how much you tell it to do. Now, there's ways you could go in there and alter that to where it ain't that way, right? 
But once again, I wasn't aiming to give you guys a completed game. So in the meantime, if you don't want it to do critical damage, you put a one in there. If you want it to do three times as much damage, you put three in there. And that's only if you hit something in the head, okay? That's the only critical damage spot set up in this entire template. If you get a headshot, it will look at that critical damage multiplier, okay? So in other words, you could probably leave that set to zero, and as long as you're not hitting them in the head, you're probably going to get regular damage. But the moment you start getting headshots, if you've got that set to zero, you ain't getting no damage, right? All right, so there's that. Okay, now the next thing that it's asking here is what damage type. So if you hit this, it's got a drop down here, and it says bullet damage or explosive damage. Once again, see the questions of uh, exactly what kind of damn gun and projectile thingamajigit are we actually trying to even make here? Well, we're going to say that it's going to be an explosive projectile, okay? Explosive projectiles do not deal crit damage. So, yes, you can leave that set to zero in this instance, okay? Because we are doing explosive damage. If that was bullet damage and you left that zero, see previous diatribe, okay? All right, so what's the minimum amount of damage I want this explosion to do? Uh, let's say 25. What's the, uh, no, that's the, the, the minimum damage would be 20. I've got these backwards from the other one. Son of a, uh, let's say 15. The minimum amount of damage I want this explosion to do is 15. The maximum amount I want it to do is 25. Right? Maybe we should just make that 20. Let's keep them pretty close. Okay, now the next thing it's asking is the damage radius. Is this an explosive weapon or not? Yes or no? It is. Yes, so then that means we probably need to put a damage radius in it, which would be your projectile's AOE amount. Right? So let's start out with something like, oh, I don't know, 250. I don't know. We'll start there. Um, should this projectile bounce or no? Yes or no? Uh, for now, we're going to say no. Is this weapon a explosive weapon, yes or no? Well, yeah, it is, so we check that true. Since this weapon does not bounce, because we told it right here not to, we don't have to put a bounce sound in. Uh, however, if you do want it to bounce, you would, you would likely want to put plug a sound cue in here so that when the projectile hits the ground, it goes tink, 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 and then it blows up, right? All right, so let's keep going here. Let's build some cool chiznizzle. Explosion sound. First off, is it an explosive weapon, yes or no? Yeah, it is. So we need to plug something in here. So we're going to say explosion, and we're just going to use the default starter content explosion for now. All right, uh, for the sound effect. Now, if it's an explosive, and we put in a sound effect, we need to put in a, a, a particle system too. Explosion. We're going to use the starter content one for now. Is it bullet impact, yes or no? Uh, no, it's, it's technically not a bullet. It's an explosive. So we don't have to put anything in there. Which then means we don't have to put an impact effect in there. Which then means... Alright, so... Explosion sound. Oh, shit. I think... Yeah. Yeah. We need to just use... Um, actually, let's go see what this actually even does first. So, let's go see. Shall we? Let's go see what we've magically created so far. So, if I pick uh, number one, which is the launcher we're working on the projectile for... Hey, right, look at that! We got something here, but now the question I have is, what happens when we shoot one of these idiots over here? You can kill these guys, so let's see what happens. Oh crap, out of ammo, read it. Let's see if I can kill it. There we go. Alright, so at this point right here, we have a working projectile. 
right? And it works very similar to, to that rocket launcher that we already had in the first place, right? All right, so if that's the case, let's go back and open our projectile back up again. All right, so what are these other settings here for? I set this up so that it could do a impact effect based on the physical material of the object you hit. So, you know, currently there's only two, uh, default and if you hit something that is considered a human, uh, either one of those NPCs or another player, right? Um, you can come in here and, you know, if you happen to have different effects for different things, you can plug them in here, okay? Um... You know, however, if you don't, you can see that just by putting in the default here, explosion stuff, it works. Okay? All right. So now at this point, let's go back to our original thing here and say, okay, now we want to change that from a static mesh to a, a particle system. So I'm going to leave that in there. I'm just going to leave the static mesh in there. Theoretically, you could just take that static mesh and you could uh, just clear it out, right? Set it to uh, clear. And then instead what you could do is you could come in here and use a particle system instead if you have one. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to put in a uh, PROJ. I think that's what comes in this template by default. There you go. So now we actually have a particle effect. Now, what does that do exactly? Well, exactly what you think it does. So now if we come in here and we uh, pick that same weapon again and now look at our projectile. Okay. There it is. See it going off into the distance? Okay, so what else, Galt? What else? What else does this template do, Galt? Why is it so awesome? All right, so let me scroll that back. Wow, that's kind of blinding, actually. Blah, whatever. All right, so let's go back to our class defaults, and let's look around at some stuff here. All right, so I noticed that right here, where is it? Right here, explosive projectile sound loop. What is that? Well, if, if it shoots a projectile and it's explosive... I'm built into this logic where it'll play a sound. The actual projectile has a sound. Right? So in here, you could select that and you could define a uh, PROJ, I think is what comes in here. Um, grenade launcher projectile loop Q. Right there. So what does that do? Well, actually... In order to test that, let me show you guys exactly what that does. We're going to actually have to spawn in here in a multiplayer environment. So I'm going to put two players, and we're going to say uh, new editor windows. So now we have two players in here. So let me show you what that does real quick. So... Let me pick that gun and let me uh, solo audio on this one here so you can hear it. I'm sure you guys know what this is, but uh, I just want you to hear it. All right, so now listen when I whiz one of these by this character's head. Did you hear that sound? Let me back up so he can't hear the shot. All right, now I'm going to whiz one by his head. Listen. Did you hear the sound fly by his head? Surely you did. That's what that sound effect is, okay? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, so moving right along. So what else can we do? Well, let's go back to our class defaults and let's look around in here and fiddle with some more stuff even. So what about this uh, whole is should bounce thing? What exactly the hell does that do? Um, well, if we check that box... And we compile it and save it. It's likely not going to do anything. And I'll show you guys why here in just a second. Alright, so if I pick it. Let me uh, put this actually back to one player. All this stuff does replicate too, by the way, guys. I tested the crap out of this stuff. Alright, so now. You couldn't kill your way out of 
So anyway, I told it that it should bounce, right? And I told you guys it likely won't, and I'll show you why. Actually, there it goes. Right, look at that. It does bounce. The problem is, is that it just never really quits, <laughs> okay? So, look at that. That's actually kind of cool, but at the same time, it's useless because it'll never, it'll never explode. It'll just keep going to infinity and beyond, right? So let's go ahead and open this up and kind of maybe investigate why. Why is that happening? Why, oh why, will that just not, you know, freaking explode? Well, because the explosion is actually triggered by the projectile stopping, right? You follow me on that, guys? It will never explode because the projectile never stops moving. Right? So how, how, do we, how do we go about correcting that? Well, if we select our projectile movement component here, and we come over here and um, we find the section right here where it says projectile gravity, what happens if we set that to 1? And then we come back in here, and we do that same exact test again at this point. What happens? Man, what are you even going on about? I don't know. What do you guys think will happen here? Now let's try that again. Hey, look at that. When it stopped moving, it blew up. Look. How about that? So look, we're already manipulating the crap out of this. Now this thing's more like a grenade launcher instead of a rocket launcher. Look. Alright, so there you go. There's that. Okay, so now what else can we do to this thing? Well, you know, we could really come in here and fiddle with a lot of stuff. So we could go back to the projectile movement component. Okay, so we gave it gravity. Um, you know, what happens if we up it even more? Let's say that it has, uh, uh, two gravity instead of just one, right? So, you know, literally we can manipulate the crap out of this thing until Jesus comes back, right? And I don't want to keep sitting here, you know, wasting time going over this and that and the other, but, um, I do want to cover this thoroughly just to show you guys exactly how powerful this template really is, uh, if you know how to use it and stuff. So now we come back over here. Now let's see what effect that had. Well, it has a lot more gravity, right? So you got to arc it up. If you want it to go further, <clears throat> you really got to arc it up. Look. See there? Now it's kind of more like a lob weapon. But when it stops, it'll blow up still, right? So what else can we manipulate? Well, it, you know, in order for this to behave more like a grenade launcher, there's a couple things that, you know, are probably screwy. One would be the bounciness. How, exactly how bouncy do we want this thing to be? Right, so there's a setting for that. So if I come back in here and pick that weapon again, watch how bouncy it is. Uh, actually, I got the, yeah, no, that ain't what I meant to do. I meant to do number five, and it ain't going to, God damn it, I should have never altered this map as much as I did. Look, we can do maybe play from here. Maybe that'll save us all. Hey, look at that. Oh, you're a genius. All right, so let's try that again, shall we? So anyway, watch how bouncy this thing is. See there? You can even adjust the bounciness of the grenade, right? So once again, I'm not going to go through every single little intricate detail of this, but guys, seriously, you can come in here and speed up the projectile speed you could give it more gravity, less gravity, right? So no gravity is being a rocket launcher. With gravity, be more projectile, uh, grenade launchery, right? And then um, we're setting this right here should bounce. We're already setting that in the class defaults, right? Remember, it should bounce. That's that exact same setting, okay? And um, if you keep looking around here, you got bounciness, friction, Bounce, velocity, stop, blah, blah, blah. You can fiddle with all this stuff until you get it to perform and behave the way that you really want it to. And once again, I can number punch until Jesus comes back. We're not going to do that. We're getting ready to wrap this video up, as a matter of fact. Okay, so let's just say that I changed the bounciness down to three. 
let's see what happens with that, and then we'll move on to uh, the very final section of this video. Okay, damn it, I meant to come over here and spawn from here. There we go. Play from here. All right, so let's pick that gun, and now let's shoot it. Look at that. It's got more bounce, and it may likely never stop. Yeah, it may not. I think I went the wrong way. Wrong, wrong way. What the hell did I just do here? Did I go bass backwards? Uh, bounciness three. Holy shit. Yeah, that should be like. What was it by default? Holy Christ. It was point six. Okay, so what I meant to do was put in point three. Hello. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. Long day. All right, so. Uh, play from here. Let's go get that one more time. Or not. Yeah, now let's try it. Now you can see it's not near as bouncy. But it slides forever. Look at that. So how can we change that? One last thing here, guys. Then we're going to move on. Uh, so we could also come in here and say that the friction's more. So let's... Uh, Let's quadruple it. So let's set it to point eight and see what effect that has. Okay. All right. So play from here. Let's try this. Now let's try. Look at that. It don't bounce. It don't. It don't, it don't go near as far. See that? See that? Now you can make it more like a uh, artillery, right? Oh, it bounces a little still, but not near as much as it don't. It don't slide. Look, so we can put it out there. Look, so it kind of lands more where it lands. Right now, of course, the higher up in the air you fling this son of a bitch, well, of course, it's going to have more bounce to it because it's coming down at a very higher velocity. All right, so now, guys, uh, this right here was what I left them with in the last video. How could we make something that shoots like four rockets at a time or whatever? Check this out, guys. So now we've got ourselves a pretty decently cool little projectile here. See? Let me uh, show that one more time. And we're going to modify the crap out of this thing. Look at this. All right, so we got ourselves a cool little something-something. But let's, let's, let's fiddle with this thing for a minute. And I'm not going to be very specific about this, so guys, pay attention here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to open the weapon itself. Right? I'm going to open this weapon, and I'm going to change the firing mode from single fire to multi-fire. And now since I did that, I now need to tell it how many rounds per shot. We're going to say that it does four. And I'm also going to give it some spread, right? Like, uh, oh, I don't know, let's say 250. And I'm going to compile this and save it. Now remember, guys, this is all the same gun. And all these guns come from the exact same blueprint, okay? Pay attention here, guys. This is where the awesomeness happens. Uh, and I meant to play from here. Hello. I should have never did that. I mean, I screwed this whole thing up just for the sake of screwing something up, but whatever. All right, so we're going to play from here. Now let's get that weapon. And what do you suppose, guys, is going to happen with this dumb bitch now? Look at that. Look at that. And they all explode at different times. Check this out. All right, maybe we ain't got, maybe we got, uh, you know, a little bit too much uh, friction on this thing. So let's open the actual projectile back up and let's go to the projectile movement. And um, what the hell did I do here? Let's change the friction back to default. And let's change the uh, bounciness to zero. Which would essentially be the same, I think, as checking it don't bounce. Right? Let's just see what happens here. Work shit, and I did that again. Son of a... I do that every time. Whew, I'm ready to wrap this up, guys. It's been a long day. And this has been a long template. So let's try this. Let's try 
Okay, that really ain't the effect that I was looking for. What I'm trying to do is to get them to... Uh, let's see, what am I trying to do here? Uh, projectile, let's go to bounciness. Let's set that back to default. Uh, let's change the friction to... This is the threshold after a bounce stop simulating and triggered on projectile stop event. Uh, let's set that to something tighter. Maybe one instead of five. Alright, now let's see what that does. And maybe I can spawn in here right this time. Play from here and we'll pick that gun and let's see what that does. Alright, that's totally not what I had in mind. Alright, so we're going to change it. Right here, we're going to cross over to answer that question from the very last video that I left you guys with. How can we make it be a four-shot rocket launcher? Okay, so we're going to go right back in here again. And at this point, we're going to go to our class defaults. And we're going to say that it just it, 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 uh, should bounce. No, we're going to turn it off at this point. And we're also going to go to our, um, well, let's just see what happens here with this. Let's go to play from here. Really, guys, it's just a number punching game at this point. You just come in here and fiddle with things till you make something cool that you like. There we go. Now that's more like what I was actually trying to do. Now when they land, they'll just explode. Boom. Okay. All right, so let's see here. What else could we do? What else? What else? What else? Okay, so we can set the gravity now back to zero, meaning it has zero gravity. So now it's back more like a rocket launcher. Okay, so if we come over here and play from here, and we do this again, and try it again, let's see what happens. Look at that, guys. And if you really want to get funky Co Medina with it, watch this. Let's change that explosion to the, uh, instead of this little weak ass one, let's, let's use that big blue wall of death, right? So, uh, explosion, maybe it was just called launcher, launcher, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to say launcher, there we go, uh. Launcher uh, IH. That's what we want right there. Now watch this explosion, guys. Play from here. See there? I almost hit that button again. You guys would have been mad. Right, now let's try. Now we got a big one. Watch this. Get away from that. Punk. Now you can also... Uh, speed the projectiles up right i did mention that but i didn't actually show you guys how you do it um so if you select your projectile movement component you could come over here and let's quadruple this let's say 12 1 2 3 which means this needs to be 12 1 2 3 which also means this velocity down here needs to be 12 1 2 3 12 000. compile it and save it now let's go see what happens all right, so if I come back in here and say play from here, let's go get that thing. Go, 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 go. Now let's try it. Look at this. Look how much faster they move. So see there, you guys can fool with that until Jesus comes back until you dial it in just like you want it, right? Watch this. Okay. And then once again, you can go back. At, so see, the combination of the two is what makes this so cool. So now I could go back into the launcher. And instead of using multi-fire mode, we could, uh, you know, you guys want to see something really stupidly insane? We could go in here and say it's an auto-fire weapon, 
right? And we could come down here and take its rate of fire and set it to something like 0.17, right? Now let's go back in here and uh, let's really crank this thing spread up. Let's double it. Let, well, no, maybe not that much. Let's go to 400. What do you guys think will happen here? And we play from here. Let's go over here and get that thing. Now watch this. Look at that. We just spin all of our rounds, but you know, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. So see there? Uh, then you could also take that same thing and you could go back in here and you could say, okay, uh, let's change and see what happens if we go to burst fire mode. And we say that it does uh, three bursts. And, uh, you know, we'll just leave everything at that, right? We're not going to change anything else. Let's go back in here. And this right here will be where I end the video, guys, uh, with the outro, and then that'll be that. So now let's go over here and grab that weapon. And now watch what happens. Okay, now there is one final thing that I want to mention here before we go into the outro. Guys, 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 pay attention here because this will save you some grief in the long run. If you have projectiles in your game, chances are that they're set to destroy themselves when they impact something. Whether it's an explosive or just a regular bullet, Generally speaking, most of the time, what makes them destroy is hitting something, right? When it hits something, play a particle effect, play a sound effect, and destroy the actor so that it gets it out of the world. What happens, guys, if somebody in your game decides they want to be a genius and just do this? Let me go over here away from these guys. What if somebody... Let's pretend for a moment that there's... 18 players on this map and all of them are using projectile based automatic weapons right and let's just pretend for a moment that they decide they all want to stand in a huddle circle jerking and doing this and then when they get done doing that they're going to do this just shooting at nothing just because they can what happens, guys, when you get 50 million projectiles traveling out into the stratosphere that will never contact and or never hit anything? What happens when you get 80 million projectiles flying off into the distance that never contact anything? That means you have 80 million projectiles in your level, and every single one of those is an actor, guys. Every one of those projectiles that spawns is an actor. So what do you do? Right? Well, you set yourself a contingency plan. Which means this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I've got one set in here by default. Pay attention, guys, right here. This is extremely important. If you go to your blueprints, right, and you open up this master projectile blueprint, I want to show you guys where this is at. If you scroll all the way down to the very bottom of this, you're going to see that it has an initial lifespan. What does that mean exactly? Here's what that means exactly. If in 10 seconds, this projectile is still in this world, destroy it. That's what that means right there. And once again, I have one set in here by default. Okay? Okay. In 10 seconds, now think about that for a second. In 10 seconds, if this projectile has not contacted anything or it still exists in the world, meaning all the immediate standing around in a circle jerk just shooting projectiles up in the sky just because they can, in 10 seconds, after one of them has spawned into the world, it's going to go away. Okay? So what happens if... Now, pay attention here, guys. Learn something. What happens if... Let me go stand over here for a second. I want to cover this because this is important. 
because I know I'm going to get hate mail and people are going to send me in uh, mocap online a bunch of hate mail about this. What happens if I'm over here, right? I'm on this side of the map, and I'm shooting at somebody all the way over there on the other side of the map. What do you suppose would happen? And it's a projectile weapon too, by the way. What do you suppose would happen? Well, here's what I would say. I would say, based on how fast that projectile is moving, there is a great possibility that that projectile will reach that 10-second threshold before it ever reaches the other side of the map, right? It's likely to. It could happen. So, you're going to be sitting there shooting at somebody across the map, and you're never going to be able to hit them, and you're going to wonder why. Well, chances are because the projectile's not getting to them in time before that 10-second threshold hits and it just destroys it out of the level. So what do you do? Well, first of all, I would suggest you get your ass closer to them, right, so that you can shoot them. Second of all, I would say that I would maybe speed the projectile up so that it can reach from one side of your map, however big your map may be, However far you want that damn thing to be able to go, I would suggest you speed the projectile up to make it travel that distance in, in less than 10 seconds, right? That'd be a way that you could do it. Um, uh, another way that you could do it, which I would highly advise against, is go in there and change it from 10 seconds to 15, right? There's other ways to accomplish the same goal without changing that contingency plan. Now, truthfully, that 10 seconds should theoretically be 5, right? But I went ahead and put 10 in here just to quell some hate mail. I can't shoot nobody. I don't know what's going on. This template sucks. Modus and uh, Gaul should go die in a ditch together because it's terrible, right? Pay attention, guys. That's what these videos are for. Don't send me hate mail, goddammit. All right, so uh, the very last thing that I want to cover uh, before I go into the outro for this video, and I know I said that a minute ago, but something else just came to mind that I want to cover because it's important too. I'm not going to show you guys how I made this. Those, this, this is not meant to show you guys really anything other than the basics of how you utilize this template that, that I've worked so hard on these, this past month for you guys. And for mocap online this is really just to show you how to use the thing uh in a basic simplistic fashion as i possibly can with you know a little minor information here and there okay which is a lot more than a lot of the template providers on the ue4 marketplace bother to do by the way so i'm going above and beyond i feel to make sure that everyone who buys this template has an outlet that they can go to to get really good specific information, not how it was made, but at least, if nothing else, how you can utilize it to do some really cool things, okay? And and once again, guys, this is a playable game. You guys can make your own maps and bake them out and follow that video and literally give that to your friends and you guys can hook up on Steam and run around and play this thing, right? It's a, it's a, it's a game. <laughs> literally, it's a game almost. Like, it's that close to being a game. You guys can carry it on out to a game, but I feel like if I'd have went any further than what I did here, literally, I should have just made a game at that point. Okay? All right. So, with that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a behind-the-scenes, uh, behind-the-curtain here, because this is important, and I know this question is going to come up a lot. I know it is. Okay? Okay. So how did I really accomplish the fact that this can be a hit scan weapon or a projectile weapon? How did I do that exactly? Well, the way that this works is, is that we're doing a sphere trace. A sphere trace, not a line trace, a sphere trace. And I explained in that other video why I use a sphere trace and not a line trace. It's so you can fatten up that trace to make it mimic the size of your projectile, right? If, you, if you're having to hit something with that little skinny-ass line, there's a chance that you might... Actually, really, the projectile or the emitter, the beam emitter, should have hit it. But it didn't because the, the it's a little skinny-ass line. 
So I used a sphere trace instead so that you could add a circumference to it to mimic the size of your projectile. Like that beam weapon that's in this template, that thing's pretty fat, right? Well, if you're just using a skinny line to dictate whether that beam hit anything or not, it's going to look derpy. And you'd be able to shoot above someone, the beam will go through them, but yet you never even hit them. Right? So how do you fix that? Well, one way to fix it is by using a sphere trace instead so you can make that trace be a bigger diameter so that that stops that from happening. Okay, but anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here. All right, so that's it. That's the nature of a hit scan weapon. It draws a line trace out into the world, and whatever that line trace connects with, that's what deals your damage, spawns your particle effect, plays your sound effect, right? That's how that works. It's shooting line traces, right? This is elementary stuff here, guys. But how, what I did was, is I put in just a simple Boolean variable that says, is hit scan, yes or no? If it's no, it diverts the logic inside the weapons blueprint to spawn a projectile instead, okay? Now, how is that happening exactly? Well, what happens is, is that the line trace comes from the camera, roughly from the camera, and it draws that same exact distance that the line trace weapon would out into the world. It connects with an object, your line trace, your sphere trace connects. Then it spawns a projectile at the muzzle of the gun, and it throws that projectile towards whatever that line trace hit, right? So that's how that works. So in a projectile weapon scenario, you really have two things that affect the range of your weapon. Well, technically, I suppose it could be three. One is the speed of your projectile, right? Two is the duration that I set for the initial lifespan, right? So if you're trying to make that projectile go from one end of the map to the other, okay, First of all, you have to make sure that it's got enough time to get there before it hits that default span, lifespan. The second thing that you would likely want to do is make sure that your line trace is long enough, right? So let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. So in the, um, well, we'll just use the launcher as an example since that, that's what we've been fooling with from the get-go here. So this range right here, guys, that has nothing to do with how far the projectile can go. I just want to be perfectly clear about that. You could set that to one, literally one, and your projectile will still fly, you know, however long its lifespan is without impacting something. The only thing this range has to do with when it comes to if, if you choose to make this be a, a projectile weapon and not a hit scan this range is how far that line trace goes. If, if you're shooting out into the world, you could likely not be given the projectile a direction that it would need in order to travel towards. So in other words, if your line trace, your sphere trace is going 4,000, if you're not hitting something and you're shooting at something beyond that 4,000, the logic that I scripted in here simply tells that projectile to go to where the, li the line trace ended at. So your accuracy is going to be a bit derpy, right? So if you're using a machine gun, a high rate of fire machine gun, and you're using it as a projectile weapon, if your line traces are not hitting anything, your projectiles are just flying towards the end of the line trace, a.k.a. the sphere trace, right? So you need to make sure that that's long enough. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why don't you just put in something huge, like 50,000? That way, no matter what, it's always going to hit something. Well, that is one solution. But if you do that and you use a hit scan weapon, guess what you've just now uh, accomplished? You've wrecked your whole game because now snipers can be on one side of the map and just kill anybody that they can manage to stick their crosshair on for a split second, right? So these are just some things that I want to talk about and mention because it matters, right? So if, I, first of all, I would suggest that you just don't use hit scan weapons anyway, right? Like the game me and a friend are building, 99.999% of our weapons are all going to be projectile based. 
all. All of them. Because, you know, it's just the way we're going to be because we don't want to, you know, have uh, simplistic weapons that you just point and click stuff and there's no delay, there's no latency. You don't have to learn how to lead targets. It's just, it makes it more skill-based, in my opinion, to actually have to hit them with a real projectile be it one that has AOE or just a plain straight-up bullet, right? That's just better to me, in my opinion. But anyway, what I'm getting at here, guys, is if you're using projectile weapons, you need to make sure that, A, this trace distance is long enough for it to hit what it is that you're trying to hit, even though that has nothing to do with how far that projectile can go. Meaning, if you set this to 100,000, but your time span on your projectile is only for five seconds, it's never going to make it to where that line trace hit in the first place, right? So you need to make sure that this line trace is long enough that you can actually hit something so that you give your projectile a hit location to spawn at the muzzle of the gun so that it has a place to send it towards, not just some arbitrary end of the line trace, sphere trace, right? You need to make sure that your projectile's movement is fast enough to get where it's going, right? And the, the final thing is you need to make sure that the lifespan of the projectile is long enough to get it to where it needs to go before it auto-destroys itself, which it auto-destroys itself because you don't want 80 million goddamn projectiles flying out into the sky that never hit anything because every single one of them is an actor, and as those actors keep stacking up over the duration of your game, you're just going to have a whole entire world full of projectiles and everybody's going to be complaining that they only get two frames per second and then that that'll be the answer why right okay so with that guys this is where i'm going to end the stream at here and i'm going to go ahead and do my outro i appreciate anyone who happened to catch this live uh or anyone who watches this after the fact uh guys this is a super smooth template it's not a finished game and it was never meant to be you're likely to find bugs you're likely to find some weird things going on that might need a little bit more spit and polish. You're likely to find some timings that could, you know, use a little bit of tinkering with when it comes to, uh, you know, the sound effect matching up perfectly with the animation, right? It was never meant to be a AAA title that somebody could come in here and change the character mesh and the models out and put it on Steam and sell it and make a billion dollars. That's not what this was meant to be. This was originally meant to be only a little demonstration template that I was contracted for MoCap Online to build to demonstrate their animations in a real-world environment in a game. Now, most animation packs that you see on the marketplace, for example, um, it's just the animations. That's it. Well, in this particular instance, you guys are getting to see a basic simplistic controller that I made, which I'm not an animation guy, right? I didn't put any transitions in this other than save one, which is crouch uh, stand to crouch and crouch back to stand. There is a transition between that, but there's no start walk forward, stop run, transition turn left, none of that. None of that. This is all using in place motions. Purposefully meant to be done simplistically. It's not nothing fancy by any stretch of the imagination. But what you guys do get is a player controller that replicates, right? It works for multiplayer. They see what you see, what they see, what you see. That goes for the reloading of the weapons. That goes for the switching of the weapons. That goes for the jumping. That goes for the crouching and uncrouching. That goes for the firing of the weapons. Every bit of this stuff in here is tested and replicates 100%. Give or take a few bugs, give or take a few lag hiccups that you might experience trying to host this on Steam with your buddies, right? That matters. I didn't put in any kind of lag compensation or any of that stuff. Very minimalistic safeguards against uh, hacking, right? This is only supposed to be a template for you guys to start from so that you can understand how I replicated these things, which I'm not saying is the right way. They work, so apparently it's kind of right. Otherwise, it wouldn't work, now would it, right? So 
uh, there's that. And uh, it's to be used as a learning tool. Somebody can come in here that buys this template and look at all these blueprints. Everything is done in 100% blueprints. There is not a single line of C++ that I put in here at all. Not one. Everything is done in 100% blueprints. Some of you guys may find this project a little bit disorganized. Some of you guys might come in behind me and critique my work, saying, Jesus Christ, God, why didn't you just make a function to do that? You're right, I could have. But to me, personally, I think that it's far easier for someone to learn from these templates when things are left out in the dirty open. They're not hidden in some macro in the middle of nowhere inside some function buried in, you know, uh, some collapsed graph. They're all out in the dirty view for you to see. Which means, by the way, I want to go ahead and show this. Here's what that means. If you open up this character's blueprint, right? And, oh, God, why didn't you put it all in the player controller? Because A, you don't have to. And B... I would rather have kept it all in one place so it's easier for people to find out what it does and how it works. If they wanted to move it to a player controller, they absolutely could. There is a player controller in here, but it ain't got hardly anything in it at all other than maybe something to do with the respawn. I can't remember now exactly what all I put in it. But anyway, if you open up this character's blueprint, look at this, right? Galt, that's the messiest bunch of so-and-so I ever seen in my life. What the actual hell? Why didn't you make functions? Why didn't you collapse graphs? Why didn't you do this? I didn't do it on purpose, goddammit. I did it so that somebody could come in here and say, okay, how exactly is this weapon firing? How the hell is this even doing this? All right, so you come to this little section right here called fire weapon. Oh, look at that. Okay, so, hey, that's that, right? You double click that, bam, it takes you right there. Okay, so here we are firing a weapon on the server. Can fire a weapon. Can fire a weapon. What the hell does that mean? Double click it. Hey, look at that. Oh, I get it. I get it. This is where he's checking to make sure that the weapon's got ammo to shoot. He's not in the middle of switching weapons. The character's not dead. Oh, I get it. These are the things that he's doing so that the weapon don't do things derpy. You can't be in the middle of reloading and firing your gun at the same time, right? This is a little function. That, and see, I did create functions. I just didn't cram everything in there. So you follow the chain on down. Oh, look, here we're turning a Boolean variable true called is firing weapon. Wait a minute. We're not turning it true. The server's turning it true because this is an event that runs on the server. You're going to notice that I name them. Server, start fire weapon. Server, stop fire weapon. Client run this, multicast that. I name my functions, my custom events, what they actually are, where they are ran at. Is it ran on the client? Is it ran on the server? Is it multicast, etc., etc.? Anyway, you can follow the chain. Now, right here, this is where the trail ends. This now goes into the weapons blueprint, the weapon master blueprint. Double click this. Follow me here, guys. All right, now we're officially in the weapons blueprint. Okay, okay, I follow, I follow. Hey, what is this thing here? What the actual hell is this thing? Oh, wait a minute. This is where he's changing the firing modes of the weapon at. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. So if we're doing single fire, it means it's going through here. What the hell is this? Oh, look, it's just a little simple check to see if the weapon's cooldown's active or not. Oh, okay, I get it. Then we go into our, our epic sphere trace. What the hell is in here? Oh, well, this is where he's doing that sphere trace he was talking about a minute ago. Right? And you follow, you literally, guys, follow this chain all the way to the end of the road. Server shoot info. What the hell is this? Double click it. Bam, it's right here. Okay, so we're right here, apparently. All right, the next thing it's doing is setting a cooldown active. Oh, okay. Shoot info, shoot info. Hmm, what the hell is shoot info? Open it up and look. Deal damage if this is a hit scan weapon. If it's not, spawn a projectile instead. All the logic and stuff's in here all organized for you guys to look at and check out. Now, after we leave here, where do we go next? Well, let's just keep following the chain of events. Hey, wait a minute. Here's another switch on Enu. Wait a minute. 
He used one of them over here a minute ago. Oh, wait a minute. So this is how he's determining what firing mode macro it runs. And he's also determining right here what one of these events is called based on what the firing mode of the weapon is. Oh, I get it. You keep following the chain of events. What the hell is this? Decrement ammo. This is where we're removing the ammo of the weapon, right? Then we're doing a little delay here, and then we're setting our weapon cooldown back to uh, false, right? Well, wait a minute. That can't be the end of the chain. Where's he doing the particle effects and weapon muzzle flashes and sounds and shit? Oh, multicast single fire F weapon FX. Double click it. Bam. Look where it takes you. We're still inside the same master weapon blueprint, right? The only difference is right here's where we're doing all the effects of the weapon. Single fire weapon FX. All right, well, let's go look in here and see what the hell this is. Play firing sound spawn muzzle flash. Played here if is 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 not an auto fire weapon. Wait a minute. This is not for an auto fire weapon. Oh, wait a minute. I get it. Auto fire weapon sound effects have to be done differently. Oh, okay. So this is where he's doing this for a single fire weapon. This is where he's playing his particle impact effect if it's a hit scan weapon. Oh, I get it, right? And that's the reason why I built this the way that I did. You want to know how auto-fire sound effects are supposed to be played? Or the way that I play them? Right here's auto-fire weapon FX. What's different here? So if I go in this one, what's different? Hey, wait a minute. I don't see anything in here about playing a sound effect. What the actual hell? Oh, auto-fire sound control. This is to fade in and out sound if it is an auto-fire weapon and also play a shot-in sound. So what happens if you double-click that? Look, here's how we're doing our uh, auto-fire sound. We're not playing a sound. We're playing a looping sound, and we're fading that in, and we're fading it out. And when we fade it out, at the end of it, we're doing that shot-in sound, that, that echo that goes off into the distance so it don't just abruptly stop firing the weapon, right? It, it gives you a little bit of a movie magic way to um, fill in that deadness, right? So that's what that does. And uh, every blueprint that I made in here is this way, right? Right here's where we're doing our burst fire weapon FX, multi-fire weapon FX, stream fire weapon FX. If you're interested to find out how that beam gun works, I would suggest you guys come in and, uh, you know, investigate this. Open up this, uh, what is this called? Uh, Streamfire PS Control, which stands for Streamfire Particle System Control. I would suggest you guys open that up and you can see exactly how that that uh, particle effect for the beam weapon works. Right? All right, guys. Uh, I think that's my outro and that's where I'm going to end this video at. Uh, there's likely to be one more video... But it's really just to demo the gameplay, meaning uh, it's going to be a video where me and some friends play the EXE. We're going to get a couple of us together and we're going to run around in the packaged version of this project and blow the hell out of each other and just make a little video showing how insanely fun this is. And it's only a freaking template, guys. I mean, seriously. It's only a template, and everybody that I've had helping me test this, they're already having heaps of fun just running around shooting the hell out of each other. So it wouldn't take very much to get this on into being a completed game ready for sale. That's how close I got this, I feel. The menus, yes, there's no game settings menus. There's no UI enough to amount to a hill of crap. But that doesn't matter. That's for you guys to carry on and polish out, okay? So with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I appreciate you guys listening to me ramble. Um, guys, seriously, when MoCap Online makes this available, if you guys want to see how all that stuff was made, save yourselves a lot of grunt work, I would suggest buying this template. Not only are you getting some good animations with it, right? The, the MoCap animations, they come in this template, right? It's their template. They can put their animations in here. So the animations that are in here are from their animation packs. Now, not all of their animation packs are in here, 
there's some rifle and pistol animations in here, and it's not even all of them, right? You get a a custom set of animations. The only animations that come in here are the ones that I use specifically to create this this template. There's no transitions in it, none of that. If you guys want that, you would have to actually get the rifle pack. But this does come with enough animations in it to do what you guys see it do in this template. There's rifle relax, there's rifle aiming, there's pistol relax, pistol aiming, there's crouch relax, rifle, crouch relax, pistol, aiming, pistol, and all that stuff. Turn in place, equip, unequip weapons, all that comes in this template. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but there's no more that comes with it than that, okay? Uh, but really what you guys are getting here is a, a bang-up template to start a third-person multiplayer shooter from. I mean, that's what you're really getting here. Never mind the kick-ass animations that come in it. The template alone is worth, you know, a significant amount of money in my view because I know what went into making this damn thing, okay? All right, so with that, guys... Have a good one. Check this template out. Don't contact me. Call, contact MoCap online. Their link is in this description. As far as I'm aware, it's their intention that this is going to be on the Unreal 4 Marketplace. But that process takes a while. I don't know how long. I've never put nothing on their Marketplace on UE4, and I don't intend to. They're not getting 30% of my money, in other words. I'm stingy. Forget it. They're not getting it. Uh, so anyway, they'll, they'll likely submit it to their... Uh, barring any issues, hopefully they'll uh, approve it because this is a really kick-ass template. Um, and it will also likely be available on MoCap Online for sale, right? So contact them, beg them about it, bug them about it. Hey, I saw that video Galt made. I want that template now. I want it now, right? And if that's the case, they may go ahead and hustle up and make it available on their website earlier. Right, because that process could take, I don't know, hell, it could take four months as far as I know. I have no idea how long it would take. Uh, but you guys, uh, you know, bug them about it. If you really want this template, and guys, look, I poured my blood, sweat, heart, soul, and tears into this thing. So this is not some half-assed template. Now, it may look it, but that was by design and intention. I am the master. If, if any of you guys have ever seen my tutorial videos, you know that it's my personal goal to take something that's extremely complex and try to break it down into its most simplistic fashion. That's exactly what I did in this, in this template. It's intentionally not hidden and tucked away and fancy functions made to control things. It's intentionally made that way. Because, you know, guys... I know what it's like to try to learn how to do this stuff. And the last thing that you need is somebody sticking stuff, hidden in functions, and creating all these fancy structures that you're mysterious and don't know what the hell they even mean. It's better in my eyes for someone who's learning to see it all out in its dirty glory and look at it. Now, if somebody that's advanced buys this template, hey, you guys are more than welcome to go in there and fancy this up all you want to. You can create as many fancy functions, math equations, math calculations, structures. You know, you, you're, well, you're welcome to do any of that that you want to. So you're welcome to go right behind me and complicate all that up just as much as you want to. Because, you know, you'll build it. You'll know how it works. This was built with a noob in mind. Somebody who's just now starting to learn how to make this kind of stuff and being able to easily follow each little chain of every event. Now, I showed you guys the fire weapon event. Every event's that way. You want to know how reload works? You start in the character blueprint. You don't go to the character blueprint, then you freaking hop into the game mode, then you go to the player controller, divided by the game's player state, and blah, blah, blah. You go to the character blueprint, that's where the majority of this stuff originates from. You go to the character blueprint, you find the little highlighted area. You want to know how I'm doing my footstep sounds? There's a, actually a little snazzy system in here that I use to control footstep sounds 
that don't have a damn thing to do with what animation's playing. It's not done with an animation notify. How about that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I wasn't about to sit there and put animation notifies in nine million different animations just so I could play a stupid sound. So I came up with an own my own customized little way of doing it. You guys ought to check it out. It's pretty ingenious, by the way. Ha <laughs> ha! Now you don't. It don't matter what animation's playing, right? Don't matter. You just go put it in one place, and it's there. You can speed this footstep sounds up and down to match whether you're sprinting, walking, crouching, running, scoping, whatever. Right? You guys go check it out. But anyway, guys, I'm excited about this, and it feels good to finally be done, right? So I, I, I think I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, stream that I submitted my final versions to the MoCap Online guys. This is it, guys, barring something that's just so freaking broken that it just literally can't be played, worked with. It's ready to go in my eyes. I, I spit, polished, commented, Promoted to variable, checked spelling errors. I did as much as I possibly could here in these past few days. And I finally feel feel confident enough saying that, Mr. MoCap Online, it's ready to go. As soon as you're ready to sell it, it's ready to go. Put it on the market and do with it. Now, I think it's my understanding that uh, some of them over there are going to go through there and create a bit fancier map. You know, uh, you know, because I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. I'm a mechanics guy. The artsy fartsy stuff just don't. I, I just I don't give a damn, right? I will make a flat checkerboard terrain with two wall panels, and that's all I do. That's all I need to test what I do, <laughs> right? So it's my understanding they're going to go through there and make some really cool scenery and maps and stuff like that, so that you know you guys will have a little something better in the template whenever you buy it. But I would say that they might go ahead, if you if you bothered them enough, they could likely go ahead and say, well, if you don't want to wait for that, sure, let, you know, we can go ahead and make it available for now. I don't know. It's up, it's up to you guys. But uh, anyway, I'm super stoked about it, guys. I think that this is really something that is, uh, it's pretty goddamn awesome if I do say so myself, right? Because I built it, but yet even having said that, I would buy the son of a bitch, <laughs> and I build this stuff myself. If I was, you know, if I didn't have time to fool with it, I'd just say, you know what, screw it. I'm buying that template, and I'd go in there and start, you know, changing things around or whatever. But I would buy it. I literally, I, I seriously would. I would buy it. I won't buy no generic shooter, but I would buy this. I'm not going to buy uh, something that don't replicate, right? Because, you know. As cool as it may be, in this day and age, it's all about the multiplayer games. I mean, seriously, guys. It's it's just, you can make a single player game, even though all this stuff in this project replicates, you can still build a single player game with it and it'll work just fine. So I don't really understand the point. In this day and age, I really don't understand the point of not just making something that replicates from the get-go. Uh, Particularly when it comes to an asset pack that you're going to sell on the marketplace. Because, guys, you and I both know, anytime you see a cool marketplace asset and you're kind of like, huh, you know, that's kind of cool. You better make sure that it's going to replicate if you're planning on making a multiplayer game. Because, guys, regardless of what anyone may tell you, let me give you guys a little inside information. Because I know. Because I've done it. And I've actually been paid to do it. Right? It's almost near impossible to take something that was not built for replication and make it replicate, right? All that stuff has to be taken into consideration from the day you start that project. And now, guys, here's the thing. If it's something simple, yeah, you might be able to go in there and change a few things around and get it to replicate. But if it's something as complicated as this, oh, hell no. You'd be better off to just start all over and pay somebody to replicate it from scratch. Then it, it would be easier to do that and probably less uh, time consuming than it would be to take a prepackaged product that don't replicate from the marketplace and then try to go in there after the fact and make it replicate. I've done it. 
Guys, bullshit. I'll just tell you that right now. Anybody that will tell you, you know, well, it don't replicate right now, but you know, I plan on make I plan on going back and making it replicate. Oh no, you're not. If you've got any work in a project whatsoever other than a week or a month, you're not going to go in there after the fact and replicate it. You're just not. And if you do, you would have been far better off just to have started over. Yeah, 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 you could probably do it. But is it worth it at the end of the day? Trying to figure out why, you know, it don't work when it wasn't made to work in the first place. It would be cheaper, easier, less time consuming just to start the fuck over again. I promise you that. All right, guys, so with that, I'm out of here. For reals this time. I'm losing my voice because I'm super stoked about this. My voice probably got loud. I'm stoked about it. I think this is a kick-ass template. You guys are going to enjoy this thing. Uh, I would tell you guys to hit me up if you have any questions or whatever, but I might be able to help you guys out a little bit, but this is pretty much an as-is product on my, on my behalf, meaning if you guys have any serious issues with it, you contact MoCap online. They'll likely get back with me. And maybe we can, you know, go back and do a patch if we need to. But guys, I'm going to tell you once again, and I'll leave you guys with this, I promise. I've tested this. I've had others help me test it. We've had four people on a map, eight people on a map. We've tried intentionally to break it. Yes, there's things that can be broken. Yes, there's little quirky bugs in it still that might need a little bit more thinking about and ironing out. But the general mechanics are in. They work. They're functional, and that's really as far as I ever aimed for this to be. So every little tiny nuance or bug that you find, it wasn't even bothered to be looked at because it wasn't game-breaking enough for me to say, yeah, you know, maybe I need to spend a couple hours or a week or a day trying to figure out what the actual hell is going on. If it's just some little minor, minute detail, guys, figure it out your damn self. I mean, seriously. Okay, and with that, you guys have a good one. This is John Galt, and we will see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.